What's going on everyone? I got a brand new retro review for you guys today as we finish our journey to the Predator, Shane Black's new film. We're talking about Predators. Came out in 2010 starring Adrian Brody, Danny Trejo, and some other notable actors and actresses in this film. And this film is about a bunch of elite warriors who get dropped from parachutes onto a planet and have to survive because they are the prey and the predators are, well, the predators. They're hunting them down. They've kidnapped them from all over the earth and brought them to this game planet. It's an awesome concept. I, I just love that concept and the little ideas that they spread throughout this film. Little tidbits that they threw in this movie from that kind of nods to the other movies and even some other cool trivia things that I do want to share with you guys. Before we get into that though, I do want you guys to know this will contain some spoilers. If you haven't seen this film, I do recommend it. If you don't care about spoilers, continue watching. The cool trivia things I love in here that I did not catch the first time I watched this film, because I've only seen this, this is my second time viewing it, and I still think it's a solid film. I don't think it's as good as the first time I watched it, but I still enjoy it. I think this film is a very solid, nice kind of line up into the Predator franchise, adding a different dynamic onto this planet where they're on a Predator's planet in a sense like maybe it's not their planet maybe it's just a game that they go and hunt but it's cool that they take them here and they have to hunt them down but one of the cool things that i love about this film is the tidbit and the nod that they make to the original predator they the isabel one of the main characters in here who talks about Arnold's character surviving because she knows what the Predator is. She might not know what it looks like, but that's the description that she's given when she sees it. And it's cool to get that little nod back to Guatemala in 1987 when we're talking about Arnold there. I, I love that. I didn't notice that the first time I watched this film a couple years back. Plus, I want to give a shout out to when Tover Grace is running away from this alien. This alien is actually the original concept for what the Predator was supposed to look like. Some cool things there. I'd say that I know that they were actually planning on doing two cameos from Danny Glover and Arnold in this film. I don't know how it would have worked out, but I thought that would have been awesome if they would have put him in here. Obviously, it was cut out and it was not made into the final film, but I thought that would have been a cool idea to have both of them reprising their role because the best part of Predator 2 was Danny Glover. And like I said, this film is not a perfect movie. There are a lot of issues with the film, but again, it's one of those films that if you're having fun with it, those issues kind of just go to the back of your head. Like, I can easily kind of talk crap about the characterization, how I don't really care about any of the characters, and how some of them don't even have charisma to them, in a sense. You're kind of just hoping some of them will die. And, you know, really the only character in here who has any charisma to him, if I'm being completely honest, is Walter Goggins. The guy always has charisma to him, but playing this, like, prison kind of dude, he just has some of the best moments. One of my favorite moments that always makes me bust out laughing and just totally, like, yeah, moment is when he jumps on the back of the Predator and starts shanking him like a prisoner. I remember when I first saw this for the first time, I loved it, and now ever since I've seen this, I, I love it even more. Every time I think of Walter Goggins, that's the main moment I ever think of any film. It doesn't matter. That's the one moment in this movie that sticks out to me. Cool to see these elite warriors really, in a sense, survive on this planet, have to work together, put away their differences, and all work together because they're all different types of units in this world. Some are serial killers, some are prisoners, some are black ops, some are spetsnots from... Uh, the Russia, you have a Yakuza cartel members. They all have different ideas and different ways that they've survived on Earth and planted and killed people on Earth. And in a sense, they bring that to here. Not all the way, because not all the characters, a lot of them can die off pretty fast, but you still get a cool realizing look to a lot of them and their different types of fighting styles. And that's something that I probably would have liked to see a little bit more of them. Just get the focus on Adrian Brody's character and Alicia Braga's character. It's not a bad thing. I, I like their characters. I think their characters are fine. Sometimes Adrian Brody is a little bit overly serious, and I know he's trying to put on his macho-ness for this film because he's an excellent actor when it comes to dramatic stuff. When it comes down to these action roles, I don't think he's the perfect match, but I still think he's solid in this movie. Personally, my favorite character in this whole movie is Alicia Braga. I think she's awesome as Isabel. And even though Walter Goggins really has that standout moment, I think Alicia does such a good job with her character where she's not overly serious, but she also has a that nice charismatic smile to her that you're really cheering for her character to survive against the Predators. Also, Lawrence Fishburne shows up in here, becoming one of the only people to actually kill a Predator in here. He's killed like three or four, he talks about. And I love that. Like, Lawrence Fishburne shows up, you know, he is surviving in a sense. And I, I love that someone is actually beating the Predators. That's cool to see that there is a way to beat them. A lot of cool cultural elements that they bring in with the Predators and their kind of just symbolicness that they have in here. There's a lot of depth that you can go into this film, but not at the same time. This is very much just an 80s style action film film filmed in 2010. It has some decent action moments, memorable moments with Walter Goggins stabbing the two Predators fighting off against one another because they're two different tribes, which I thought that was awesome to bring that different layer that there are different Predator species out there and different types of tribes that they have with them, one another. And in a sense, it's really just all a game between all these different Predators. Oh, you guys can probably take a shot for every time I've said that word, but it's the truth. That's what they're called. I don't know what else to call them. Well, outside, I'm going to give Predators a B-.
Definitely enjoy this film. I like rewatching it. It's a ton of fun at times, even though you don't really care about any of the characters. It is one of those films to check out. I cannot wait to give you guys my review for The Predators, Shane Black's new one, so make sure to look out for that later this week. I can't wait to talk about that film, guys. Seriously, I am like over the moon excited for it. But tell me, guys, what are you guys' thoughts on the whole Predator franchise now that we finished up? What is your favorite one? Of course, maybe you guys might want to save that for when I do my ranking later this week. Of course, guys, if you guys are new here, hit up Sandwich on Films right down below, because right down there you guys can get into advanced movie screens and also check out some movie news and also some movie reviews. But of course, until next time, stay classy. <laughs>